uh, how metaverse and um, uh, various other uh, technologies like NFTs and will contribute towards a Web3 space. So there's an yeah. interesting question, especially it gets interesting because when we start getting into Web3, that's yeah. where we are going to get into an amalgamation of various technologies that have come into play. So I wanted to share a slide deck as well, wherein I just wanted to talk you through what Web3 actually essentially means. So, so far, when we have looked at the evolution of the internet, we have been used to consuming information which is available on the web pages. That was the web 1.0 era. Then we moved into a higher density of information wherein there were two-way exchanges between the participants, the respondents, and the kind of content also evolved in terms of just not being confined to web pages. We were looking at um, video-based content through YouTube and um, social media experiences through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. So, so that evolution actually changed the way the information was being dispersed. And overall, when you look at all of this information, it was well documented, like a document kind of structure. Now, when we're looking at Web3, at the heart of Web3, we have fought, got something called a semantic web. And the basic premise of semantic web is that the information should be easily understandable by anybody. And when I say anybody here, just not talking about humans, but also machines. We know that machines are playing a very important role when it comes to uh, gathering and serving information to us. We have seen the evolution of chat GPT, which has taken the internet by storm and the kind of content it can generate. So at the back end of it, it's just essentially a bot, which is able to get us some information, consolidate it and make it understand, understand it better so that it can serve us better. So, in the Web3 space, we are going to look at information wherein machines can evolve to better understand the information. And the information itself will be documented in such a way that it can be understandable both by humans and by machines. And it will not be um, associated with one platform. Like it will be, for example, we have got Facebook, we have got YouTube, and there are customary formats or proprietary formats which these platforms use. It will not get confined to those. It there will be more generic and open nature of accessing the information. Then the ownership will also change. It will no longer be platform dependent. Rather, the content creator owns the content. They host it, they distribute it, and they get complete control in terms of how the information will be perceived. So that's that's what the heart of Web 3.0 is. And then on the top of it, we have got something called a smart applications, wherein uh, we look at the blockchain layer coming into place to drive the whole infrastructure. So there's smart contracts, there's distributed autonomous organizations, also called as DAO, which helps to bring in an automated nature of operations on the web. And finally, on the auto layer, the internet that we know today, which is accessible through a browser, catching it through YouTube, or reading out the web, that's going to evolve, and that's where the metaverse comes into perspective. The different ways to consume metaverse content, you don't necessarily need to put on a head-mounted display, or the Oculus kind of a headset. Yeah. You can even access it through the web. So th there are lots of evolutions that are taking place. And okay. you, can, you can imagine the kind of yeah. players. You're not just going to be looking at few players to participate. There are going to be multiple players. And everybody has a stake in this. Everybody can participate in their own way. It's not like and some of the existing players will get redundant. They just need to evolve in order to adapt to the new Web 3.0 revolution. The interesting okay. aspect is that um, Gartner, who's been the leader, in understanding the industry terms and presenting it out has come up with something called as a hype cycle, which is applicable okay. to a lot of domains. And the Gartner Web 3.0 hype cycle has got all of this into place. Mostly, as you can see, the players in this whole space is being driven through the blockchain technology. There are different components of blockchain technologies and they follow their own maturity model. So the, on this chart, whatever you see on the right-hand side in the white spaces, those are evolved and will continue to evolve over a period of time. What you see in the blue shaded one on the left hand side, which is the innovation trigger. Now, these are the ones which are going through a round of innovation. So okay. I wanted to talk about some of the key aspects in this space rather than the ones which are already evolving, because there are already a lot of players who are in that space and they're trying to gain traction and push the market through. So it will be more advantageous to people who, if you can focus on the innovation triggers so that you can start building products now, which can scale up in the next two to three years and you're ready to deploy products in that space. 
Wow, that's fantastic. This hype cycle is so interesting to see. And especially yeah. uh, the cryptocurrency decentralized applications and blockchain wallets, they are considered as uh, developed or at the, that they have reached their uh, maturity stage. Can yes, they have that? reached their maturity. Yes, they have reached their maturity. It does not mean that they've reached their end of life. It's just that they have more evolved and are in a better okay. shape for mass adoption. In in this particular hype cycle from innovation space, there is another topic of which is here, which is of very close interest to mine, and um, I've had great interest in it from almost like two decades now. I was I've been con con constantly following up its evolution. So that's the decentralized autonomous organization, also called as DAO. And and I remember that in my earlier years of my um, career, the idea of implementing DAO was something which was extremely difficult to pull out in an organization. Um, there have been a lot of attempts that were made, but then it, it was kind of a struggle to get it adopted. What blockchain has done is it has actually brought it in a much simpler form onto the landscape and completely um, get, have provided a lot of traction to DAO for faster implementation in an organization. And I think this is definitely going to be a game changer. We are going to look at the way things work from an organization point of view, where the focus is going to get into the niche aspect of an organization, the mundane activities and the typical operational level activities within an organization might all be DAO driven. So, so I think this is going to be a whole new way of working that we will be seeing as we see DAO being implemented in the organizations. So as um, enthusiasts and looking at a work progression within um, this life cycle and the career plan, we should be cognizant of this fact as to how DAO can actually uh, bring in that change. Right. And and say the question for you, so uh, the project uh, that you're working on, does it need a DAO support as well? Uh, not at this point of time. Okay. But uh, yes, it is smart contract driven, so it is more of a decentralized application okay. and a smart application, okay. but uh, as of now, we are not incorporating DAO. So uh, what DAO uh, typically does is, yes, it brings in the automation components which are being driven through smart contracts. Okay. Along with that, okay. it also brings in the voting concept wherein you can decide as to which way the organization should head towards. So, so you can bring in those concepts as well. So we are not yet there. We Probably that's something that can be looked at in the future yeah. phases. Yeah. The way I look at DAO is more of a philosophy than a technology implementation. Okay. Yes, to enable okay. it, you need to have the technology in place, but then if your organization is designed around the concepts of the DAO, then the way the organization works is completely different. Yeah. For example, you, with the implementation of a DAO, you could be a single person company, which is being run by the community. And that changes everything, actually, the way the whole uh, organization works. So adopting that philosophy would make a lot more importance. And in order to assess the better implementation of DAO, you can look at what the organization has been doing with respect to their uh, roadmaps with respect to involving the community in terms of gathering feedback, in terms of understanding what the community needs and delivering on those guidelines. I think that will be a better way of um, looking at and measuring the organizations from a door point of view. Next is, there's something called as decentralized finance, where we have seen yeah. how the um, protocols have been established, which utilizes cryptocurrencies and are built on the blockchain platform. However, one of the major challenges with this was um, from a regulatory point of view. Government agencies and regulatory bodies were not really um, keen on adopting DeFi and cryptocurrencies into this space for lots of reasons, um, more specifically related to anti-money laundering laws, AML, and um, the privacy control in terms of identifying the uh, identity of the individual behind the transactions, basically KYC driven, and few others. So these were the two primary concerns which the regulatory body has had. So in order to address this, if you get into the innovation trigger, there's a whole new concept that the institutions are all trying to work through called CD5. That is centralized, decentralized finance. So it's it's a basically the marriage of centralized finance. That's the typical way of the way the um, banking institutions currently work. And marrying that to the way the decentralized finance works in the blockchain world. Now, is this going to be easy? Definitely not, because there's a lot of complexity involved. We are trying to look at bringing in two different mindsets or the thought processes in terms of how these concepts work and bringing them onto a common ground. So CD5 is typically, uh, also can also be referred to as an institutional DeFi, wherein the banking institutions are trying to take advantage of the technology and the evolution. 
So the two main concerns, especially that will be addressed as part of CD5 would be the KYC and the AML laws, which will help to gain um, traction in agreement from the um, regulatory bodies and the government agencies so that we can happily um, adopt the DeFi space without any concerns from its usage. Because yeah. today, a lot of institutions are not able to take advantage of what DeFi brings to the table just because of the regulatory guidelines. So yeah. the CN CD5 will help to get over that. And there are a lot of projects which are already underway in Singapore and Switzerland, which are uh, working in this space. One of them is the Guardian project, which is being executed out of uh, Singapore. Okay. And uh, there are lots of institutions which are involved as part of that execution. Um, I, I think I made it very simple, but in, in when you look at the way you can, you're trying to combine the philosophy of blockchain, which is based on the decentralized concepts and taking the traditional way of working, which is based on the centralized concepts, yeah. bringing them together is going to be quite a challenging activity. Should but definitely. if you are able to do that yeah. without getting into a private blockchain or a private network scenario, then that's that's a win. So uh, the Guardian project that I was talking to you about was the public blockchain platform that's going to be deployed. And um, from a technology point of view, what they're trying to do is they've taken Aave, which is one of the popular DeFi platforms, and they've forked um, a version of it and are trying to utilize that. So, so you can see um, that the technology already exists. It's just about adopting and building on top of it. So from the web feed auto hype cycle, these are the three points which are very close to my heart and for which I'm quite upbeat and I'm looking forward to that. And I just wanted to share that with you.